Well, God bless you, and welcome to Thursday School, which is Sunday School on Thursday. And we delight to have you with us. So glad that you turned aside to study the Word of God with us. If this is your first time, this is your divine appointment, which is the media ministry of the Devon Jackson MD Ministries. I'm Dr. Jackson. Welcome. Uh, we bless God for the privilege to study his word and to come to know him. And uh, we are studying the international Sunday school lessons, which if you don't have a book, even while we're talking, you can Google international Sunday school lessons and join in. If you have your book, uh, then you can follow along there. Um, today's lesson is found in the last book of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi. So if you don't have your book, not able to Google, certainly please turn in your Bible to the book of Malachi. We'll be in both chapters 2 and chapter 3. Uh, today's lesson is lesson number 5 of the spring quarter for the year 2020. Uh, the lesson date is March the 29th, and our subject is the need for just leaders. And this is a powerful charge. It's a call some of it's an indictment, but it ends with a hope, and we praise God for that. So please do join us for this study. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Father, we love you so very much, and we bless you for your sweet son. Purify our souls. Cleanse us before you. Forgive all sin. Restore and renew and revive and refresh. Prepare us to receive your word. Transform us, Lord. This is not an empty activity. This is not something we do for tradition. It's not something we do out of rope, but we've come before the fountain of living waters and asking you to water our soul with the water that is living. Living water, everything it touches, it makes it alive. That's the water we're coming for. Water our soul, transform us, make us new. Make us like your sweet son, Jesus, for we pray it in his name. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah, the need for just leaders. So we praise God, and again, this is your divine appointment. Um, these uh, video teachings of the Sunday School lessons, Thursday School, are available on Facebook at the Devon Jackson MD Ministries Facebook page. They're also available on our YouTube channel. If you go to YouTube and search for Devon Jackson, D-E space V-O-N Jackson MD, you'll find there, I think we're uh, uh, many, many scores of videos. I'm not even sure I want to guess the number of videos. There are these teachings, Sunday morning worship revival services, and new seminar teachings are being added. So please feel free to visit us on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. Amen? So today's lesson is the need for just leaders. Now, justice is something that is significant to God. He is a holy God. He's a just God. And in all his dealings, they are by justice, which means that it is with an honest, uh, balanced uh, approach that is not uh, skewed to the favor of one over another. God does not engage in favoritism in the sense of preferring one soul over another. But he is a father now. And those that are his children, they are certainly preferred. Amen. The invitation goes out to the whole world for any of us to become his children. But make no mistake about it, those that are the children of the Most High walk in a certain favor with their father, as would be naturally understood to teach us that spiritual principle. The need for just leaders. Um, if you will, turn with us now to the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. And then we will skip over to the book of Mal uh, over to the chapter five, chapter three, verses five and six. The entire lesson is in the book of Malachi, chapter two and chapter three. Now, chapter two, verses one through nine. I'll be reading here from the King James version. It says, "And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you: if ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart." to give glory unto my name, this is God talking, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, or yes, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, or look, I will corrupt your seed, 
and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts. And one shall take you away with it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi. We'll talk about that, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace. That's the kind of covenant the Lord had with Levi, of life and peace. And I gave to him for the fear whereof he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, all right, and did turn away from iniquity. Verse 7, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Very important. Verse 8, but, ah, uh, the transition now, Ye are depraved out of, ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. Ye have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people, according as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Partiality, notice these words in there, equity and partiality and justice, all of these principles all through. And let's go ahead and read chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. The Lord says, and I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness. Notice that. I'm going to be a swift witness against the sorcerers and the adulterers and the false swearers and against those that are the hireling of his wages, uh, the widow and the fatherless, and uh, that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 6, for I am the Lord. Watch this now. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Wow. Wow. The subject is the need for just leaders. Let's look at the picture here. We are, as we have been studying, uh, in the division of the uh, Old Testament, uh, which is this section called Prophets. There's been the major prophets, and we've been studying more specifically out of that prophecy section, the ministry of the minor prophets, uh, Habakkuk and various other ones, Amos and so on. And today's lesson is the final book of the Old Testament, and this book is also in that division of the Minor Prophets, written by a man named Malachi. The timing of Malachi is here at the end where um, we know the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes were all united under the leadership of uh, kings uh, Saul and David and uh, Solomon. Under Rehoboam, there was a split, 10 tribes that they called the 10 lost tribes. The 10 tribes went to the north, and they were the nation of Israel, and the two tribes in the south, as a brief overview, amen. Um, the 10 tribes to the north uh, fell into captivity to the Assyrians, and because the capital city of that nation of Israel was Samaria, the interbreeded Jews, who the Assyrians and the Jews interbred, their children were considered half-breeds, so they were called Samaritans because the capital city of the northern kingdom was Samaria. And so those that were uh, residents of the uh, two tribes in the south, the, tr the nation of Judah, they considered those that were the half-breeds in the north um, as uh, less than them because they had intermingled with another nation. Not only did they intermingle in terms of just marriage, but their worship had become perverted. And that's the key element. Amen? Um, and uh, so over these years now, uh, the northern kingdom fell to Assyria, and the southern kingdom didn't learn the lesson from what happened to others. We should always learn from what happens in the lives of others and not repeat the same error. But Judah, the southern kingdom, committed the same error and drifted from the truth, and they too fell, but they fell to Babylon. 
the king of Babylon, uh, the famous king Nebuchadnezzar. It was under Nebuchadnezzar that that southern kingdom of Judah fell into captivity. So now the ten tribes to the north have fallen to the Assyrians. Um, perhaps around a hundred years later now, the southern kingdom, the same thing, it has fallen now to Babylon. They have gone into Babylon and they've been there for 70 years. God has raised up uh, Ezra, who is a priest, and Nehemiah, the wall builder, and first Zerubbabel, who comes to rebuild worship in the temple. And they have now finished their 70 years in Babylon. They've come back now to Jerusalem, and they're rebuilding the temple, amen, under uh, Zerubbabel, and Ezra is restoring worship. Nehemiah is building a wall. The people are getting reestablished. Well, they got distracted, and their focus was not uh, just on the temple and worship, but they were giving attention to their sealed houses, their, their cathedral homes that they're building. Does that sound familiar? They got distracted with their personal matters of getting restored since we're back home now, and they did not prioritize the matters having to do with the temple and so on. And some of the uh, previous uh, uh, minor prophets challenged the people, Haggai and Zechariah, and uh, they challenged the people about their need to uh, prioritize the way of the Lord. Are you with me? At the end of all of those challenges, the Old Testament concludes with the book of Malachi, where the Lord is saying, I've brought you back home. I've given you opportunity. I've sent my prophets. I've sent my word. You've hardened your heart. And now he's talking about some of the injustices that they've engaged in. And because of this unrighteousness, the Lord is about to close the book and lay judgment on the nation. And we know between the period of the close of the Old Testament and the opening of the New Testament, there's four centuries where there's no fresh word from the Lord. The Lord's not sending a word from one of his prophets and saying, thus saying the Lord. The Lord is quiet in terms of speaking a word to his people, a fresh word for 400 years. How awful that is. Now, since that was the judgment, we ought to learn, right, from what happened to others when they're disobedient to God, judgment comes. We don't want to make the same mistake. So what was the mistake? Well, let's study the lesson and find out. In today's lesson, the book of Malachi chapter 2, the Lord is challenging the priests. And then we hear him specify Levi. Well, we know that um, a man named Jacob, a man, his name was changed to Israel. And Israel had 12 sons. And each of the descendants of the 12 sons was called a tribe. And those are the 12 tribes of Israel. They make up the nation of the Israelites. And uh, we call them the Jews, amen, in the Holy Scriptures. And so uh, these uh, persons in these tribes had different assignments. The uh, first son of Jacob was Reuben, his second son was Simeon, his third son was Levi. That third son, God called him and said, Levi, uh, all the other tribes, they'll go to battle, they'll go to war, and they have all their different duties. But Levi, I'm going to sanctify, set apart your tribe to be the tribe of the priests. Your job is not to fight those physical battles against nation. Your job is to fight the spiritual battle and be the spiritual leadership of the nation. That tribe of Levi, of course, included Moses, and Moses anointed at the Lord's direction, not his choosing, just nepotism, just family, preferring family over others, amen. But uh, he anointed his uh, brother Aaron to be the first high priest because God told him to. So it was to always be that Aaron's sons would be the priestly line that would serve in the house of God. And then one at a time would be the high priest. But all the priests were to be the sons and the descendants of Aaron. Now others in the tribe of Levi served as Levites. Um, basically what we would call deacons and ushers and choir members, musicians in the house of God. All of their labor was focused on the spiritual battles, the spiritual matters of the nation. Are you with me? That's why in this passage, the Lord is challenging the tribe of Levi. You've not been faithful to the call. I called you to lead the people in righteousness, lead them in truth, lead them in justice, purity. Teach them my word. 
model that by living it. And instead, you have compromised and not done as I called you to do. And whenever there's compromise, the Lord has to speak to it. So here, in today's lesson, we see where the Lord is talking to the priests. And these are the sons of Aaron. And there's some pretty heavy challenges here and accusations. And these are things that are not random. God knows what he's talking about when he's challenging them about their actions. He starts out and he says, um, uh, verse 2, if you will not hear, and if you'll not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I'm going to send a curse upon you, and I'm going to curse your blessings. I've, in fact, I've already done it already. But you didn't lay it to heart. Now, that is one of the most key things. God is so gracious. He's so long-suffering. Before the final judgment comes, the Lord often, there's a lesser judgments that come along the way. We ought to hear the voice of the Lord, heed those things so we don't end up with the ultimate judgment. But instead, when God began to judge them, they didn't lay it to heart. They didn't take it seriously. They didn't take the warning of God that worse things are to come. Saints of God, a hard heart is one of the worst things that can happen to the believer. We have to pray, Lord, create in me a clean heart, as did David in Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. Cleanse my heart. This isn't just about the words out of my mouth. I need my heart to be right. And the Lord said, you, when I cursed your blessing, you didn't take it to heart. Some people say, I'm blessed of God. I can't be cursed. You better read the book. The same Father that blesses us in our righteousness will chastise us for our unrighteousness. We need to take that one home and remember it. Amen? So the Lord says, I've begun to curse your blessing. Sometimes we say, oh, the devil did it. The devil did it. Now, some of this the devil didn't do. It was God judging our sin. Amen? And God, in fact, does judge our sin. And the Lord said, I'm judging your sin. I'm bringing you into a place where now, uh, because of your unrighteousness, you will experience chastisement. And it didn't come from the devil. It's coming from me. Hallelujah. 